Um, it's sort of like over time, of looking. I mean, years of just sensing the dynamics of the rectangle. You, and not only your own, great paintings. It's, it's really important to stand in front of great paintings. Uh, it's not only because we um, start learning, you know, like, wow, what did this guy do? Or what did she do? My God, it's amazing. And we start to unpack it as a painter, you know, like, whoa. Uh, but also, we become energetically sensitive to the power of the painting. So our system starts to learn to vibrate. It's like a, a, a tuning fork. And we start getting sensitive to a stronger vibration. And we bring that to our work. We also become sensitive to that wholeness of the painting, of the great painting. And When we come to our work and we start to, uh, it's like, oh, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't have that, <laughs> right? It doesn't have that wholeness. It doesn't have that power. Okay. And then we start seeing what area is lacking. And we, we, we don't know at first. It's a, it's a bit like going blind at first. We're just checking things out. And so we, we cover things up. What would happen if I worked here? What would happen if I did something here? And because when we cover things up, what that does is we're visually trying out. What if that area was different? Would the situation connect up more like a like an electric circuit? Is that area breaking the circuit? So I'm I'm literally using my fingers to imagine what would happen if I did something there? What would happen if I did something there? What would happen if I did this or that? And usually those are areas that we're not paying attention to. That's sort of the secret. It's like, we're obsessing on this area. I remember vividly one of my teachers, Don Wigand, and I was, oh, I was working on something and I was working and working and working on an area. <laughs> and he said, that, that's got a lot going on. But over here, and he covered up a different area of the canvas. You're not really looking over here at all. And he covered it, and as soon as he covered it with his hand, not, not literally on, just, you know, visually. It was like, whoa, the whole thing opened up. And so you start to become sensitive to the dynamic of the rectangle. The whole rectangle, all the elements of the rectangle. And as you do that, over the weeks and months and years, your system starts to just get sensitive to the overall dynamic. And it just is part of your, your beholding. You, you're, you're beholding the image. And you're, you're sensing sort of peripherally. Per peripheral vision is what takes in the whole thing. And then that peripheral vision actually seems to extend to our bodies. That is, our bodies sort of get sensitive. So we're kind of standing in front of this thing. And we're kind of looking, not just visually, but sort of with our torso, like taking it in. And then we, it's like, oh, that area right, right up there, 
that's not really playing with everything else. What happens if I, whoa, if I cover that up? Oh, whew, that releases. It's like, oh, okay. I wasn't really paying attention to that. So it's a practice. I mean, the truth is, wonderfully, it's like a, it is a kind of mindfulness practice because you have to receive the whole thing and you have to wait because you don't know. And you just try. You just keep trying. And you try. And then you literally put on paint and say, ah, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, so it's like you're learning. And that's a, so that's composition as a discipline, as a, as a, as a painting discipline, as a, as a practice. Fantastic. I'm going to do just what you say. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I needed to hear it's that. Really <laughs> brilliant. It's really something. And when you stand in front of a Matisse, and you stand in front of a Cezanne, look at, there's a beautiful book on, I think it's called Finished. No, that was a different show. There's a, there's a, maybe it was that. No, 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 no. There's a book of un, what's considered unfinished Cezanne paintings. I think it was in Germany or something, some, some exhibition. Anyway, take a look at him. And you see, he's always leaving everything in some kind of balance, even though the painting's not finished. He is being sensitive to the whole dynamic of the rectangle all the time. And Matisse is doing that. Diebenkorn is doing that. And this teacher, Don Wegant, he was a student of Diebenkorn. So it was like, whoa, okay, that's cool. You know, so this whole way of kind of sensing the dynamic, what needs to happen next? 